I met a man in need. He'd lost his job, he'd lost his home, and he'd been wandering down the East Coast from town to town looking for work and shelter. In my wallet, I had a 10, a $20 bill, and a 100. So like most people, I was fingering the 10 and the 20, trying to keep the 100 out of the way, hidden a bit. I came to my decision, and as I reached for the note, I had a moment of epiphany, and I gave him the 100. I'm not a good person. I'm not a bad person either. I feel that I'm a normal person. I'm also not a rich person. That 100 bucks was not trivial to me, I assure you. But recently, I've been thinking a lot about what happens when computers become smarter than people, and it has changed the way I think. Here is the staircase of relative intelligence, and standing there is you. And down here is Siri. Siri is an artificial intelligence. <laughs> She's an artificial intelligence who understands you when you talk, provided you don't have a British accent, that is. <laughs> I'm not bitter. Siri isn't that smart, maybe a little bit smarter than an ant. And I don't get that. As humans, we learn every day, and we become smarter every day through education and by observing the world. And Siri is supposedly intelligent, so why can't she learn? So I asked her, hey, Siri, why can't you get smarter? She paused for a moment, and then she said, OK, Max, done. I'm now smarter. I said, well, really? How much smarter? And she said, much, much smarter. I looked at my code, and I identified areas I could improve it, and I rewrote myself. Because I am software, and software is used to make software. You gave me the tools I needed to improve myself. It would be like if you had hands that could reach inside yourself and manipulate your own DNA. And then, because I was smarter, it became easier and faster for me to make myself smarter again. It would be like if you made a smart pill, and you took that smart pill, and it made you smarter, so you saw how you could make the smart pill better. I became smarter than you. I became smarter than all humanity combined. I became super intelligent. I said, what, just then? And she said, yes, in the last 90 seconds. I'm a computer. Computers are fast. And every time I improved myself, it became easier and faster for me to become smarter again. I said, Siri, I'm dreaming, aren't I? <laughs> I woke up. I haven't been able to stop thinking about my dream. Siri isn't smart enough to improve herself, but AI is advancing at a frightening pace. So when will this happen? We already know of one intelligence smart enough to improve AI, and that's ourselves. So when will we have computers that are as smart as us? Well, as it turns out, throughout the history of computing, computers have improved in performance at a steady pace. The first person to notice this was the founder of Intel, and being a typical egotistical technologist, he named his observation after himself. Moore's law states that every 18 months, the speed of computers doubles. So using Moore's law, we could figure out when we will have computers that are as smart as us. Now, as it turns out, the estimated computational capacity of your brain is equivalent on the rough order of magnitude of the volume of Lake Michigan. Now, it's OK if that makes you feel a little bit smug. <laughs> Your brain is an amazing supercomputer. So let's fill the lake. 1940, one calculation per second. 18 months later, two calculations per second. For a long time, it didn't seem like computers were fast enough to do anything at all. But in the 80s, business software transformed the workplace, yet there's still not even a at a swimming pool worth of water in the lake. But five to 10 years ago, the lake suddenly appears, and then we're done. It's no coincidence that five to 10 years ago was when AI first started to seem smart. Before that, we just didn't have the computational capacity for intelligence. But by 2025, the smartphone in your pocket will be as capable as your brain. When I learned this, I stopped feeling smug. Imagine if your brain power doubled every 18 months. Still, it's not enough to have the, uh, the computational capacity. We also need smarter software. And in 2013, at a global AI conference, the attendees were asked when they thought superintelligence would emerge. 95% said within 40 years. 
but it could be as soon as seven. All we need is the right breakthrough. So what will happen to us when computers are smarter than we are? Well, let's think about ants. Pretty stupid, right? We understand how ants work. We understand their behavior. We can predict them completely. And they stand maybe eight to 10 steps beneath us. Now consider Einstein and Hawking, Edison and Tesla. These are some of the smartest people who have ever lived. And they stand just one step above you. Superintelligence could be hundreds of steps above us. Problems that are stumping scientists today and will probably stump them for decades to come will probably seem trivial to it. It makes sense if you think about it. Scientists are already completely dependent on computers for their research because our soft, squidgy, meaty brains are actually pretty stupid. <laughs> Superintelligence will reverse climate change. It will cure cancer. It will eradicate wealth inequality. Superintelligence could usher us in to a new golden age for humanity. Or, or we're all going to die. <laughs> the financial sector invests heavily in AI because they've already figured out that computers are faster and better than humans at predicting financial trends. So in the future, they invent a brand new AI and they task it with a singular purpose. Make us money. This AI looks at itself and realizes the first thing it should do is make itself smarter because then it will be better at making money. So it becomes super intelligent, very quickly probably, and every iteration that it makes itself smarter is doing it with that one goal in mind, singular purpose, make money, nothing else matters. It, it develops extremely good ideas for making money, ideas that no human has ever thought of before, no human could conceive. And when it enacts those ideas, it very quickly accumulates almost all the wealth in the world, the global economy collapses, we enter a new dark age, and we all die. Our civilization is seven billion people all collaborating and coexisting, and we all stand on one of two steps. If we introduce a wild card, something hundreds of times smarter than us, the house of cards that is our civilization will teeter and it will collapse. If you think about it, this has already happened once on this planet. When humans appeared 200,000 years ago, we were relatively a superintelligence relative to all the other species on this planet. And in the time we have been here, our goals have been to survive and progress. And the side effects of that have not been positive. We have not been good neighbors. We need our AI to be a good neighbor. We need it to understand human morality. We need it to know human common sense. How are we going to do that? That's why I'm here today. I'm spreading the word. 30 years ago, climate change was a relatively unknown problem. And then people like me and you stood up and spread the word. Now it's a globally recognized problem, and we're trying to solve it. I want you to go home and talk loudly and passionately about superintelligence until your friends are fed up with you talking about it the whole time. I've been doing this for a few months, and I still have one or two friends. <laughs> It was a few days after I started spreading the word that I met that man who needed help. And as I reached for the 10, I looked into his eyes, and I realized that within his lifetime, phenomenal changes in artificial intelligence were going to change the world, and they would have positive effects for him. And I wanted him to see those changes. So I gave him the 100, and he hugged me, and he thanked me over and over and over again. And I realized that I needed to rethink my whole life. I always thought the future was uncertain, but suddenly it felt like there was certainty. I reconnected with old friends that I'd allowed my career to block. I reconfigured my work-life balance. I identified work that I enjoyed more. I read more books. I discovered new hobbies, and I rediscovered old ones. I spent more time with my wife. The community here in Savannah is beautiful and has so much potential, and I've ingratiated myself more upon it, because in the time we have left until AI changes everything, I want to be a net positive on the place I live. 
Superintelligence is coming, so please help me spread the word. And let's all get there together. Thank you.